All right, here's a bit of an idea that worked out very well indeed. It's based on, well, here's a good size comparison too. The internal rod, a carbon rod from an old AA battery, and as long as it doesn't say alkaline on it, you should have a carbon rod inside. And a capacitor. So what I've done is, I've used these snips here to cut around the top of an old capacitor, and I've taken the insides out of it, and then just use that as the container. But I'm also using the aluminium construction of it as the negative terminal. So basically the thing will end up empty and then I've wrapped up um, the carbon rod in some kitchen roll such that it fits in there and it's all nice and tight inside there. And then I've added alum from this bottle. It's the very same as this you can get from the store, from Walmart or wherever else. I made this one years and years ago and basically just sort of saturated some water with the alum and that's been there for, as I say, years. So, let's see what voltage it has on it when it's not charged. And there we go, 1.186, 1.19. That is pretty good for uncharged. So what can we do with this thing just sat here? Well, there's a little blocking oscillator. And if I attach it to the plus and the minus, there we go. The oscillator kicks in. And that thing will run forever now until that dries out. So if I form a cap, then maybe it would keep going all the time and I might reuse the black part you can see a bit better under there the black part where the terminals normally come out from a capacitor we might be able to take one of those and put a hole through the middle and it would form a decent enough seal I might well try that but also here's an idea and I don't know if it will work um, here is a semi-levitated rotor based on the internals of a solar waving toy thing from Dollar Tree and other dollar type stores um, and this one has been using a lead and carbon cell just on test, it's been running okay but what I've done is disconnected that now and there's not enough solar sort of light, <laughs> there's not enough light coming in from this LED light bulb so nothing's going on there, now if I connect this new cell up and we'll see if something happens so we'll connect that to the side. Another good point is, of course, you've seen there with the kitchen roll, it doesn't leak out, so there's not similar problems as, say, that type where some of the electrolyte may leak out. But anyway, we don't know if this will work yet. I connect up to the positive. Do we get anything? Well, oh, yes. Give it a little, well, maybe not. Let's just see if it does start up. It might take a while, of course. Just doing its left and right stuff. But it appears like it's trying, and this is like I say on charge, just made and left there. Now let's try let's we'll see if it will keep on going. And in which case then, you see the whole point of that is, if it does keep on going there, is that if they those two solar cells charge up the alum inside this, then we should end up with a higher voltage uh, and ability to run this thing all the time. So I charged it for a few seconds there on the hobby grade charger on the LED setting and we've got there about 1.5 volts. So I'll reconnect this again and we shall see if it runs the motor any better and that should show hopefully um, that it has a chance with solar charging. So I can just get this connected properly. Uh, that's a bit stronger and away it goes <laughs> I'll give it a little jolt to start it up properly and that should pick up speed now yeah so there we are so it's an alternative little idea it's uh, completely non-toxic just uses alum and then the other components I say a dead battery from a jewel feed for something and a capacitor and off you go. So I'll be seeing how this runs over the next few days, seeing if it does solar charge. And thanks for watching.